One of the most beneficial ways of achieving your financial goals is actually considering how you're spending your money and if you can balance spending it wisely over just generally spending less on the areas that don't matter to you. So in today's video, I'm going to break down nine ways that I have tried and know work to allow me to focus on spending less on things that don't matter and spending wisely on things that truly do matter to our family. Hi there, welcome back to my channel today. My name is Jennifer from mamafurfur.com. I make videos all about personal finance, investing and success mindset in the UK. In today's video, I want to give you nine ways that I know can allow you to spend your money wisely, but also reduce your spending in areas that simply don't matter to you. So if you're brand new to this channel today, I'd like you to hit subscribe so you never miss any of my videos. And also you might want to check out my best of playlist. I talk about the stock market, investing, using tax efficient savings, such an investment ISAs. There's tons of resources there, basically allowing you to get time and financial freedom. But let's get started on those nine ways that I know help me and I believe will help you spend less money and focus on things that truly bring you joy. So the first method is simply to track your spending. I've mentioned this in a few other videos before, how this conscientious spending, looking and seeing actually how you're sending your money out into the world truly can change your life. The first thing I did was simply pick up a little notebook. I mentioned this before in a couple other videos, but simply having a little notebook or a bit of paper, an effort that actually requires you to take out a pen and notepad will always give that extra step. So actually you can record where your money is going. A lot of banking apps do similar process where they allow you to track physically every time you use your card or you take money out, but I like using a physical notebook. So simply for let's say two weeks or three weeks or even a month if you can do that, every time you make a single purchase, you write it down, you write down the date, how much you spend, cash, card, doesn't matter. And then you'd also write down exactly what the item was that you bought. Was it food? Was it petrol? Was it even some fun money? Whatever it was, but you also don't analyze it at the time. You simply write down any money you spent. And I also like to include money that came into our life. But for this particular case, we want to track where our money is going. If you look then back at your spending, let's say a week at a time or that month, you can quite easily see the things that you're giving your attention to with your money, but also it's are some obvious places where you're overspending. I talk about having budgets and budgets are incredibly important to manage how money is coming in your house and how ultimately you want to build your goals but do you actually know where your daily spending habits are taking you? You actually start to see loopholes where the money could be better spent. Often people will say, I don't have enough money to travel, but there's a lot of lunches and teas and coffees getting bought during the week. But if you were able to change one habit, such as taking in a packed lunch a couple of times a week rather than eating out, you could quite easily build up a small amount of money every single month that could be used to travel every few months instead. Simply looking at your spending will open a world of information to you and also allow you to be that accountability step that allows you to make sure you're making the right choices with your money. There's a fantastic quote by Jim Rohn who was a very famous motivational speaker in the 80s and 90s who worked with the likes of Tony Robbins and kind of started them on their journey. He said that if you gave him your bank account he could work out exactly what your goals were and the direction of your life simply by looking at your spending and that's very much the case certainly with the tracking element I mentioned there. But there's another way actually to encourage you to spend your money wisely being accountable in your bank accounts, but also actually separating out your money. So I do this with the money stacks method. Six different ways I send our money out at the start of every month. We have fun money, we have long-term savings, we have education, and I'll leave the link that actually explains the overall picture of that structure down below. And in every single Budget With Me video, you see me put this into practice, where I will actually separate out in different bank accounts our money according to those goals and those kind of key features of our life. And I found that since we've separated out our money for definite purposes, it's allowed me to be conscientious of our spending. For example, education, personal development is hugely important to us. So having a category, which is that guilt-free money, if you like, every single month that should be spent on developing ourselves. We do things like I do seminars, I do e-courses, I'll do mentorship from that money, but also my children as well and my husband will do further education, we'll go swimming lessons or art lessons. So it's that area of expansion and growing in our life 
life that is so important to us. And I know by having that dedicated amount of money and bank account every single month that I can keep track on, it encourages me to spend on the areas that matter to me most. Rather than having just one bank account, our income comes in and eventually it just goes away and eaten up. Another great way of spending money wisely and actually stop spending on things that don't matter to you is simply to decide your financial decisions and goals ahead of time. So for example, achieving financial independence, so an amount of money that we could actually live off passively on the interest every single year is one of my key goals. Another goal is our mortgage overpayment, getting rid of our only debt that's left. And so at the start of the month, as soon as our bills come out, also comes out our 10% that's going towards our financial freedom and also we make an overpayment on our mortgage. And those two things come out of our bank account first of the month before I can do anything else. And that way I've taken the emotion from those decisions. I've not had to rely on actually myself deciding to put that money over, it's simply on autopilot. And that's where you take away the habit of sometimes living just within your paycheck, that all you have right now you spend. By putting these goals in the first of the month or as soon as you can after you get paid, allows you to take the emotional element of making the decision. It's a no brainer. These goals will happen without you having to do any effort at all. The next way I like to test actually what we truly need to spend money on is to use my VIP or downgrade challenge. Now I've talked about this again in other videos, but basically when we were making a lot of cuts to our money, when we were trying to pay off a huge amount of credit card debt, 24,000 pounds worth to be exact, we actually did this VIP or downgrade challenge. Simply I went through our bank account and said, do we need to pay for that Sky TV or the gym membership? If we don't feel it's adding value, we simply cut it out of our budget for 30 days, giving us the option to go without to see if we truly miss it. Now, obviously, if you've got subscriptions that don't allow you to do that, that's fine. You might have to postpone those perhaps to another couple of months or the next year when you can actually come out of contract. But for example, with your food bill, where that is probably the second largest expense that you have in your home outside of your rent or your mortgage, could you actually shop at a different supermarket and see some of those savings? We all know that everybody loves Aldi and Lidl in the UK, especially. If you're used to buying in like Tesco or Asda, are you buying the branded items when perhaps their own version might be just as nice? But that's also the flexibility of this particular strategy. You can have the VIP level items as well. You can have the branded items if it allows you to spend wisely on things that truly bring you joy. So similar in the VIP and downgrade challenge, I also like to do no spend weeks. Now you might have heard a lot talk about no spend days. If you're particularly in the debt free community in the UK, these are simply where you aim to not spend anything that is outside your essentials. So if you needed food or petrol, you'd really try to keep it to a minimum, but anything outside of that, you wouldn't be spending money on. You'd look for ways to have cheap or free days with your family or perhaps in your normal everyday living. Now, what I like to do is limit this to a week, seven days at a time. And you can even do this once a month, really to encourage you to think outside of the box of your normal spending habits. What we'll do is simply go without spending on anything that's not essential for seven days. So I count essentials as if you've got any bills to pay, of course, keep the lights on, keep your home safe, but food, petrol will be kept to a minimum and anything outside of that really we wouldn't be spending money. A lot of people like to add in the element of perhaps every time they would have spent money, such as maybe on the coffee, on the way to work, lunch out, they transfer that money to a separate bank account and then throw that at debt, which is a fantastic idea. So we would perhaps do that with our mortgage or our holiday fund, some better area for our money. So really giving yourself this choice aspect of do you actually want to spend today or do you want to see actually the abundance that's already in the world for you? I love doing these seven day challenges. We do them perhaps every four to five months. Really like it for actually clearing out my cupboard or food cupboard that's maybe built up of items we've simply not got in the habit of using. But also seeing what you truly want to spend on, what maybe you're excited to spend on the next week after your seven day challenge. I really advise giving it a go. And the great thing, I've created a video on this concept in the past actually. I'm going to link it down below is how to do a seven day no spend challenge. Go and check it out. The next way to actually use your money wisely would be create actual wealth for your life. So I do this through investing often and regularly as early as I can. So if you've followed my channel before, you will know I'm passionate about using investment assets and actually using the stock market to allow us, our family and you to gain passive income in the future. Very much in the way like a retirement fund, your pension will when you're 65 or over. What I mean by this is I've learned how to use the stock market to buy index funds, stocks and shares so that that eventually over 5, 10, 15 years could be a passive income for us. That relies on those stocks gaining value, changing value over time, being more than their 
you're worth now and then we could withdraw the interest to live off as an income. The great thing about investment ISAs is it's tax free, the amount they put in and tax free on the way out up to £20,000 in the UK per person per year. And once I learned that principle really of multiplying and growing our wealth, it was one of the key decisions that I knew we wanted in our life to really spend our money as wisely as possible. There is no greater thing than learning how to make money from the money you have right now and using the stock market is simply a no-brainer. So if you're interested to learn more about passive income, more about investments, I've got a video all about passive incomes for beginners, you can go and check that out, but also tons of videos about investment ISAs, the stock market, how to even open up an investment ISA. So really after this video I encourage you to go and find out more. The next thing I like to do to really make sure I want to spend money in a certain area is simply going on a 24-hour freeze and what I mean by that is often when we're stuck in particularly on online shopping we see lots of items that we want taking that pause that 24 hour freeze button to actually see add it to basket but then walk away and actually truly work out if you want to spend that money is one of the greatest strategies you can give yourself in your mindset often people will buy those impulse buys and often we perhaps regret spending those amounts of money on things that truly don't matter but giving yourself particularly with online shopping 24 hours at least hit that pause button then come back to it another great benefit of this is a lot of other sites outside of Amazon tend to see when you've created a basket they want to encourage you as well to spend if you walk away so suddenly you might find you get a couple of codes or vouchers from companies in your inbox to encourage you to turn that basket into an actual purchase another great thing about having that freeze for 24 hours at least allows you to actually see is it the cheapest deal that you've found for that item let's assume we do want to spend the money so using sites like perhaps Idealo which is a price comparison site or allow you to actually search the internet perhaps there's better deals out there codes vouchers there's even cash back sites where you could get more of your money back simply by spending same amount of money in that location my next tip I very much touch upon over and over again and really it's simply making sure that when you're spending money it's truly bringing you joy it's for no one else to judge how you're using your money if you find value in your life I do this with our budget as a family I'll look and see where we're sending our money out particularly with direct debits things that are on autopilot and truly are we still getting the same joy from them it could be perhaps at that art class if my son didn't enjoy it perhaps we want to give it up for a couple of months to see if the spark could be reunited is it perhaps that you're spending consistently just too much money on food there's too much in the cupboards at the end of the month or even are you spending too much of your money on transport could there be a way to think outside the box so often when we break down our spending take that moment to look at our budget we actually see some elements that life could be improved by I've talked about perhaps the travel budget if you think it's consistently just too much of your budget has been eaten maybe you're not seeing the value in how much commute you do could you approach your boss and say can I work one day from home change life in some way it allows you the opportunity to start designing life as you actually want it final tip for actually spending money wisely really has changed your life as well and that's having simply fun money guilt-free money every single month in our budget we put a portion of our money aside that we do not know how we're going to spend every month but it's simply to enjoy life in the moment to perhaps go to the cinema perhaps days out whatever we feel inspired to we don't need to have a plan for that money and it's the moment that you keep the fun element in your spending we don't need to focus on only paying off debt as if that's the only goal or only paying into investments you're meant to live life right now and by keeping the fun element and life still in there it allows you to then know you're spending your money as wisely as you can with the joy element I won't need to tell you how many ice cream lolly makers I've had in this house a number of them every time I see one I get inspired that I think I could do that but that's where the guilt-free fun money is for it's meant to be that if you on a whim want to do something you don't need to feel guilty that some other area of your life is suffering and it's all about balance isn't it and hopefully with these tips I've allowed you to see a couple of ways that we've actually implemented to truly see our spending habits are they actually what we want them to be and it's allowed us to make sure our goals are in place as well you've got to be able to live life with your money money is absolutely in abundance but also it should be used to bring joy it shouldn't be a thing that causes you stress or pain and hopefully these strategies will allow you to feel just a little bit more in control of how you're spending your money plus keeping it on things that truly matter to you. So if you're looking for any other tips and suggestions all about money, you're in the right place, of course. I'd love you to hit subscribe, but also go and check out mamafurfur.com. I have blog posts. I've also got calculators. I've got various products on that site. I know will help you. I've got a budgeting tool called the Autopilot Money System. I've got e-courses. I've got even my book, tons of resources there that you can go and check out. And also I'd love in the comments if you've got any strategies that help you spend on things that truly matter to you 
let me know as well share them with the audience I know they really help to make a difference in other people's lives and all the comments down below and if you really enjoyed today's video give it a thumbs up all helps for people to actually find my channel and more of my videos and finally if you've got any topic suggestions you'd like to see me cover on this channel leave them in the comments I always read them and do my very best to make sure they happen so thank you so much for watching I'll see you very soon